The Narragansett people are an Algonquian American Indian tribe from Rhode Island. Today, Narragansett people are enrolled in the federally recognized Narragansett Indian tribe. They gained federal recognition in 1983. The tribe was nearly landless for most of the 20th century, but acquired land in 1991 and petitioned the Department of the Interior to take the land into trust on their behalf. This would have made the newly acquired land to be officially recognized as part of the Narragansett Indian Reservation, taking it out from under Rhode Island's legal authority. In 2009, the United States Supreme Court ruled against the request in their lawsuit, Carcieri v. Salazar, declaring that tribes which had achieved federal recognition since the 1934 Indian Reorganization Act did not have standing to have newly acquired lands taken into federal trust and removed from state control. The Narragansett tribe was recognized by the federal government in 1983 and controls the Narragansett Indian Reservation, 1,800 acres, 7.3 square kilometers, of trust lands in Charlestown, Rhode Island. A small portion of the tribe resides on or near the reservation, according to the 2000 U.S. Census. Additionally, they own several hundred acres in Westerly. In 1991, the Narragansetts purchased 31 acres, 130,000 square meters, in Charlestown for development of elderly housing. In 1998, they requested that the Department of the Interior take the property into trust on behalf of the tribe to remove it from state and local control. The case went to the United States Supreme Court as the state challenged the removal of new lands from state oversight by a tribe recognized by the U.S. after the 1934 Indian Reorganization Act. Rhode Island was joined in its appeal by 21 other states. In 2009, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the Department of the Interior could not take land in into trust, removing it from state control, if a tribe had achieved federal recognition after the 1934 Indian Reorganization Act, and if the land in question was acquired after that federal recognition. Their determination was based on wording in the Act, which defines Indian as, all persons of Indian descent who are members of any recognized tribe now under federal jurisdiction. The Narragansetts were one of the leading tribes of New England, controlling the west of Narragansett Bay in Rhode Island, in portions of Connecticut and eastern Massachusetts, from the Providence River on the northeast to the Pawcatuck River on the southwest. The first European contact was in 1524 when explorer Giovanni de Verrazzano visited Narragansett Bay. Between 1616 and 1619, infectious diseases killed thousands of Algonquians in coastal areas south of Rhode Island. The Narragansetts were the most powerful tribe in the southern area of the region when the English colonists arrived in 1620, and they had not been affected by the epidemics. Chief Massasoit of the Wampanoags to the east allied with the colonists at Plymouth Colony as a way to protect the Wampanoags from Narragansett attacks. In the fall of 1621, the Narragansetts sent a sheaf of arrows wrapped in a snakeskin to Plymouth Colony as a threatening challenge. But Plymouth Governor William Bradford sent the snakeskin back filled with gunpowder and bullets. The Narragansetts understood the message and did not attack them. European settlement in the Narragansett territory did not begin until 1635. In 1636, Roger Williams acquired land from Narragansett Sachems, Canonicus, and Miantonomi and established Providence plantations. During the Pequot War of 1637, the Narragansetts allied with the New England colonists. However, the brutality of the colonists in the Mystic Massacre shocked the Narragansetts, who returned home in disgust. After the Pequots were defeated, the colonists gave captives to their allies, the Narragansetts and the Mohegans. The Narragansetts later had conflict with the Mohegans over control of the conquered Pequot land. In 1643, Mayantonomi led the Narragansetts in an invasion of eastern Connecticut, where they planned to subdue the Mohegans and their leader Uncas. Miantonomi had an estimated 1,000 men under his command. The Narragansett forces fell apart, and Miantonomi was captured. The Mohegans then took Miantonomi to Massachusetts Bay to petition the colonists to permit his execution, to which they agreed. While traveling back in the forests of northern Connecticut, Uncas's brother slew Miantonomi by bludgeoning him on the head with a club. The following year, Narragansett war leader Pesicus renewed the war with the Mohegans, and the number of Narragansett allies grew. 
The Mohegans were on the verge of defeat when the colonists came and saved them, sending troops to defend the Mohegan fort at Shantuk. The colonists then threatened to invade Narragansett territory, so Canonicus and his son Mixano signed a peace treaty. The peace lasted for the next 30 years. Christian missionaries began to convert tribal members, and many Indians feared that they would lose their traditions by assimilating into colonial culture. And the colonists' push for religious conversion collided with Indian resistance. In 1675, John Sassamon, a converted praying Indian, was found bludgeoned to death in a pond. The facts were never settled concerning Sassamon's death, but historians accept that Wampanoag Sachem met a comet, known as Philip, may have ordered his execution because Sassamon cooperated with colonial authorities. Three Wampanoag men were arrested, convicted, and hanged for Sassamon's death. Metacomet subsequently declared war on the colonists and started King Philip's War. He escaped an attempt to trap him in the Plymouth Colony, and the uprising spread throughout Massachusetts as other bands joined the fight, such as the Nipmuc. The Indians wanted to expel the colonists from New England. They waged successful attacks on settlements in Massachusetts and Connecticut, but Rhode Island was spared at the beginning as the Narragansett Tees remained officially neutral. However, the leaders of the United Colonies, Massachusetts, Plymouth, and Connecticut, accused the Narragansetts of harboring Wampanoag refugees. They made a preemptive attack on the Narragansett Palisade Fortress on December 19, 1675, in a battle that became known as the Great Swamp Fight. Hundreds of Narragansett non-combatants died in the attack and burning of the fort, including women and children, but nearly all of the warriors escaped. In January 1676, colonist Joshua Teft was hanged, drawn, and quartered by colonial forces at Smith's Castle in Wickford, Rhode Island, for having fought on the side of the Narragansetts during the Great Swamp Fight. The Indians retaliated for the massacre in a widespread spring offensive beginning in February 1676, in which they destroyed all colonial settlements on the western side of Narragansett Bay. The settlement of Providence Plantations was burned on March 27, 1676, destroying Roger Williams' house, among others. Other Indian groups destroyed many towns throughout New England and even raided outlying settlements near Boston. However, disease, starvation, battle losses, and the lack of gunpowder caused the Indian effort to collapse by the end of March. Troops from Connecticut composed of colonists and their Mohegan allies swept into Rhode Island and killed substantial numbers of the now weakened Narragansetts. A force of Mohegans and Connecticut militia captured Narragansett Seicham Canonche a few days after the destruction of Providence Plantations, while a force of Plymouth militia and Wampanoags hunted down Meta Comet. He was shot and killed, ending the war in southern New England, although it dragged on for another two year in Maine. After the war, the colonists sold some surviving Narragansetts into slavery and shipped them to the Caribbean. Others became indentured servants in Rhode Island. The surviving Narragansetts merged with local tribes, particularly the Eastern Niantics. During colonial and later times, these tribe members intermarried with colonists and Africans. Their spouses and children were taken into the tribe, enabling them to keep a tribal and cultural identity. Ninigret, the chief sachem of the Narragansetts during King Philip's War, died soon after the war. He left four children by two wives. His eldest child, a daughter, succeeded him, and upon her death, her half-brother Ninigret succeeded her. He left a will dated 171617 and died about 1722. His sons, Charles Augustus and George, succeeded him as sachems. George's son, Thomas, commonly known as King Tom, succeeded in 1746. While King Tom was sachem, much of the Narragansett land was sold, and a considerable part of the tribe emigrated to the state of New York, joining other Indians there who belonged to the same Algonquin language group. Nevertheless, in the 1740s, during the First Great Awakening, colonists founded the Narragansett Indian Church to convert Indians to Christianity. In the ensuing years, the tribe retained control and ownership of the church and its surrounding three acres, 12,000 square meters, the only land that it could keep. This continuous ownership was critical evidence of tribal continuity when the tribe applied for federal recognition in 1983. In the 19th century, the tribe resisted repeated state efforts to declare that it was no longer an Indian tribe, 
because its members were multiracial in ancestry. They contended that they absorbed other ethnicities into their tribe and continued to identify culturally as Narragansetts. The tribal leaders resisted increasing legislative pressure after the American Civil War to take up citizenship in the United States, which would have required them to give up their treaty privileges and Indian nation status. The Narragansetts had a vision of themselves as a nation rather than a race, and they insisted on their rights to Indian national status and its privileges by treaty. While testifying about this issue in a meeting with a committee of the state legislature in 1876, a Narragansett delegation said that their people saw injustices under existing U.S. citizenship. They noted Jim Crow laws that limited the rights of blacks despite their citizenship under constitutional amendments. They also resisted suggestions that multiracial members of the tribe could not qualify as full members of the tribe. The Narragansetts had a tradition of bringing other people into their tribe by marriage and having them assimilate as culturally Narragansettite, especially as their children grew up in the tribe. From 1880 to 1884, the state persisted in its efforts at detribalization. The tribe had agreed to negotiations for sale of its land, but it quickly regretted the decision and worked to regain the land. In 1880, the state recognized 324 Narragansett tribal members as claimants to the land during negotiations. The state put tribal lands up for public sale in the 19th century, but the tribe did not disperse and its members continued to practice its culture. The Narragansetts lost control of much of their tribal lands during the state's late 19th century detribalization, but they kept a group identity. The tribe incorporated in 1900 and built their longhouse in 1940 as a traditional place for gatherings and ceremonies. In the late 20th century, they took action to have more control over their future. They regained 1,800 acres, 7.3 square kilometers of their land in 1978 and gained federal recognition as a tribe in 1983. According to tribal roles, there are approximately 2,400 members of the Narragansett tribe today. Like most Americans, they have mixed ancestry with descent from the Narragansetts and other tribes of the New England area, as well as Europeans and Africans. A 2006 survey conducted in preparation for development of a new residential subdivision revealed what archeologists consider the remains of a, a Narragansett Indian village dating from 1100 to 1300. It is located at the top of Point Judith Pond in Narragansett, Rhode Island. This area had been identified in a 1980s survey as historically sensitive, and the state had a conflict with the developer when more remains were found. The state intervened in order to prevent development and to buy the 25-acre site for preservation. It was part of 67 acres planned for development by the new owner. Further archaeological excavation on the site quickly revealed that it was one of two villages on the Atlantic coast to be found in such complete condition. The other pre-Columbian village, Otan in Narragansett, Algonquin, is in Virginia. It has a high concentration of permanent structures. Historians and archaeologists knew that maize was cultivated by Algonquin tribes, but there has never been physical evidence before the discovery of this site. The tribe's method of grinding the kernels into a powder was not conducive to preservation. In the first week of excavation, 78 kernels of corn were found at this site, the first time that cultivation of maize could be confirmed this far north on the Atlantic coast. The current members of the Narragansett tribe have contributed through oral history to accounts about the ancient people who inhabited this site. They were members of the Turtle Clan, and the settlement was a conduit for trade and medicines. They used the surrounding pond and its many islands for hunting camps, resource collection, fishing, shellfish, burial sites, and herbal collections for medicine and ceremony. Providence founder Roger Williams was brought to the top of Sugarloaf Hill in nearby Wakefield when treating with the Narragansett tribe. They pointed toward this large settlement and told him that it was called Nani Higanset. This site is now believed to be the center of the Narragansett geography where they coalesced as a tribe and began to extend their dominion over the neighboring tribes at different points in history.